If you don't run Slackware on your Raspberry Pi, you can probably skip this video. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Slackware ARM vlog. I'm Stuart Winter, the platform architect and lead developer for Slackware on the ARM platform. And in this episode, I'm going to show you how you can transition your Raspberry Pi uh, from the official Linux kernel onto the Raspberry Pi kernel fork. I talked a little bit about why you might want to do that in the previous episode, but essentially the, the way it currently stands uh, with Linux 6.1 is that there's a divergence with features and bug fixes in the upstream Linus Torvalds kernel. In effect, particularly this means that the system isn't as stable as it really could be uh, using the upstream kernel. So some of you, for example, might want to run KDE and find that it's seg faults, it crashes, uh, and that's really purely because of the kernel. So I've built Slackware packages of the uh, Raspberry Pi kernel fork and made them available and included some documentation as well. So in this episode I'll show you how to transition to those packages and then how to upgrade them. All right let's go. So I'm going to use my Pinebook Pro for this. You can see here on the right hand side this is the Raspberry Pi screen. Uh, it's plugged directly, the, the monitor's plugged directly into the Raspberry Pi and you'll see that it's continuously flashing. When it initially boots, it doesn't do that, but after a while it, it does. This is one of the fixes that uh, you get with the Raspberry Pi kernel fork. It's obviously not supposed to do this. Back with uh, Linux 5.15, I think, I can't remember. The one that we, whichever kernel it was that we had originally, it didn't. It worked actually better than, than it currently does. Uh, but yeah, this is just one of the many problems. So we open up our search engine. I type in Slackware ARM and you want to hit the Slackware ARM website. This is the, anything that's arm.slackware.com, this is the official Slackware website that you want to visit. So go click on that, click on the installation guides on the left-hand side menu, and this will bring up uh, the installation guides, of, of course, and then click on, currently, um, in July 2023, we haven't yet had a release of Slackware for the ARM64 platform, or ARCH64 as it's called, so we're just using the current development branch. Eventually you'll see a 15.1 release in there. Alright, click on the instructions for the Raspberry Pi uh, 4 here, so just click on the instruction link. Okay, then scroll down to where it says switching to the Raspberry Pi kernel fork. So it gives you a little bit of information here, but you just need to click on this link here. So Slackware provides replacement kernel packages. So the way it works is that you install Slackware using the official installer. So everything, uh, you just follow the instructions basically. And then subsequent to that, if you have issues with it like I currently do, then you can transition over. There's a little bit of information here regarding the caveats, um, like, and you'll see that in this video. Um, but for I, you know, I've already released this well over a month ago to the community on LinuxQuestions.org, and uh, the feedback's been good. You know, I don't think these caveats actually affect um, the usage for really anyone actually that uses a Raspberry Pi. So uh, I don't really see an issue with them. Okay, so let's scroll down. If you're using Slack package, what you'll want to do is blacklist the official Slackware kernel packages and that's simply because if you're using slack package when you go to update it will replace the raspberry pi kernel packages with the ones in the official slackware arm or slackware art 64 tree and you don't really want to do that so you can do that here okay so that's here so yeah so if you wanted to do that you can just copy this text here put that in your clipboard and you can, uh, yeah. So uh, Muttley here, this is the Raspberry Pi. I'm just logged into it remotely from my Pinebook. Can't. I'm just logged into it remotely from my Pinebook Pro. 
because of, because of the device uh, because the the, the um, video just doesn't work properly on the Raspberry Pi with the kernel.org kernel. Uh, it's a model, isn't it? Something like that. Yeah, so there you go. So this is the Raspberry Pi 4. So I'm just going to paste in that information there and you then have a blacklist for your kernel uh, packages if you're using Slack package, which is the recommended um, option. Okay, so we've done that. So then we need to just download the packages like this. So we just make a directory to house the packages as we download them. And we're gonna just follow the instructions here. So we set a variable in the bash shell called current. And uh, yep, so there is no 15.1 release as I said yet. So we don't do that. And uh, we just copy this. And we can, now we're gonna download the kernel packages. Hopefully that all works. Uh, yeah, it does. So this won't take too long because the um, my internet connection is quite fast and these kernel packages are actually quite small. Oh, apart from the source, of course, which <laughs> which is actually a few hundred megs. Um, but nonetheless, you can see it still won't take that long. So whilst that's doing that, let's have a quick look. What else do we need to do? Um, so after that, we're going to import the Slackware ARM GPG key so that we can verify the packages that we've downloaded. Then we'll verify them switch ourselves to root, enter the directory into which we downloaded the packages, and then we're gonna upgrade the the packages. I'm only going to, in this document here, it only says to upgrade the kernel modules and the kernel base package, or kernel arm as it's called. Um, we're not gonna be switching over to the kernel source. It's You don't need to do that, um, really. <laughs> you really don't need to do that. Um, but it's there if you want it. And there is no kernel headers package. We don't provide that because you do not need that. Um, yeah, okay, so let's see how that's doing. Almost done. Great. So that will just walk through how to do it. So we'll upgrade the packages. There's going to be a number of warnings that I'll show you. Uh, and then we can reboot into the kernel. Okay, cool. So there we go. So the packages have downloaded. Uh, what's next? So yeah, so we need to import the GPG key. Just import that like that. Uh, oop, right. Yeah, and then um, oh, oh yeah, okay. Good signature. So what we're looking for here is good signature. Now this is of course where, where where I realized that I did this as root. I actually ran these commands as root initially, um, whereas in the documentation it, uh, it 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 assumes you're using your regular plebeian, you know, your non-root user, uh, and I wasn't. I was just using root already, so I don't need to su to root here. I've already entered the directory. I've verified the packages, so that's great. Okay. So yeah, I do recommend you actually follow the documentation. I wrote the documentation, so <laughs> I don't always follow everything that I write to the letter. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna upgrade the kernel modules and kernel ARM base package. One of the really important things here is that you upgrade the kernel modules package first. Uh, that's because when you upgrade the kernel ARM or the kernel base package, as, as I call it, that runs the OS initrd manager tool, um, the operating system initial RAM disk manager tool. Uh, which creates a new version of the initial RAM disk for, for for the machine that you're upgrading the packages on. In our case, it's the Raspberry Pi. In order to create a working initial RAM disk, it needs to be able to copy the kernel module, the correct versioned kernel modules into it, which means that they need to be on the file system, you know, within the operating system before you do that. In this instance, you'll see that it hasn't actually complained about anything. If you do see this error, these these errors here when you do it, it's perfectly okay. You can just ignore them. But you'll see that in my case um, that it hasn't done that on this occasion, so that's fine. Um, but yeah, it, it, there is a there is a really good reason for that, and it's nothing to be concerned about. If you weren't transitioning to the Raspberry Pi kernels, that would be an error that actually that you need to look into. But uh, if it does happen when you're transitioning over to the Raspberry Pi kernels, that's not a problem at all. What we're going to do now is reboot the machine. So I'm going to 
switch over now. Oh, I should actually type reboot into and press enter. So I'm going to reboot the machine and I'm going to switch over here. You're looking now at the serial console. So you'll see the serial output. And here is the, uh, the, the output on the monitor as well. There we go. It's a bit, it's a bit bright there, but you so you what you're watching U boots um, boot here, and there we go. So you might spot a couple of mod probe errors. Yeah, so you'll see fatal here. Uh, that's not a problem. That's just because the way that the is basically the reason why that is is because we're using the default BCM two seven eleven. I think it is kernel configuration is not the same as the Slackware official kernel. It just doesn't have the same modules configured. Okay, so you can see uh, that, if we, actually, did I even create a user on here? I'm not sure I did, because I reinstalled it uh, the other day. No, nope, I didn't. <laughs> so one of the things you can see here, and this is listed in the uh, caveats is that when you boot, if you are using the serial console, you will lose access at this point in, during, you know, uh, during the boot processes, which is basically in the bootloader, it's just starting a kernel and you lose access. I did try fixing this and by tweaking various things and I didn't succeed. Um, I think it might be quite easy to fix, but it's just really not that important and no one seems to be concerned about it in the community. Um, so I'm not, too, I'm not gonna put any more effort in, in, into it at the moment. Um, but if you guys do figure out how to fix that, just let me know and we can update the documentation. One of the other things that you'll see is this here um, about the init 0 S0 respawning too fast. And that's because of the serial configuration. In fact, that's actually what that's about. Because um, in Slackware ARCH64, in Slackware ARCH uh, by default, we have the serial port enabled, but because of the difference in the configuration, it doesn't work. And again, that's why it doesn't work when you boot the system either. So yeah, you can ignore all of that. Okay, so I've added myself a local user. Again, sorry about the sun, uh, but it doesn't matter at the moment. Um, so I've added myself a local user, and I'm going to run X, and I probably configured KDE because I tend to, because it's the top. Uh, item in the menu in the, inst in the installation menu for the window manager. Yeah, there we go. So with uh, you know with the Linux 6.1 kernel, the upstream Linux Torvalds kernel, uh, KDE seg faults mm, pretty quickly. Um, but you should find that KDE works here with the uh, Raspberry Pi kernel. And again, this stuff should be fixed at some point in time in the upstream kernel. I haven't checked whether it's fixed in the latest uh, 6.4 or greater kernels, but that's because we, at the moment, we're sticking with a 6.1 kernel in Slackware until the release. There we go. Yeah, so this is working. So by now, KDE would have already seg faulted um, using the uh, official kernel. So yeah, there you go. You can see that that works. Okay, so we have upgraded to the, or transitioned to the uh, Raspberry Pi kernel fork kernel. And you can see that we're running Linux 6.1.35. So... I've just pushed out the latest version of the available Raspberry Pi kernel fork, which is Linux 6.1.38, which for the astute viewers amongst you, you may notice that's the kernel we started with, but that's because the um, official Linux kernel uh, was already on that version. And, and I just reinstalled the Raspberry Pi um, from all the latest, uh, with all the latest, uh, latest stuff. And so we actually downgraded to Linux 6.1.35 um, to the Raspberry Pi kernel version. And now we're going to upgrade to the Raspberry Pi kernel version of the <laughs> uh, of Linux 6.1.38. So what that means is that it's okay to move, you know, it's, it's okay to downgrade, it's okay to upgrade, it, it, it works really well, it's not a problem at all. So let's return to the documentation, and we talk about keeping the RPI kernel fork packages up to date. So what all we need to do is just repeat these steps above, which essentially is just downloading the... Um, well, actually, it's a few things. Uh, we need to set this again. I mean, you could probably turn this into a script. I might make a script of this in the future. Um, it's easy enough, but at the moment, you can just do it manually or you can write your own. Okay, so I'm just going to, again, I'm, I'm, I'm actually doing this as root and you really should do it as your plebeian user, but 
Um, I generally know what I'm doing. <laughs> so uh, now kernel fork. Uh, now really you should use your plebeian, i.e. non-root user to do all of this stuff, particularly rsync with dash dash delete. But because I put the content here and uh, I know what I'm doing, I, I'm gonna use root in this occasion. Um, but yeah, you really should follow the instructions and, and download things with your um, with your plebeian user and then only switch to root when you need to. But, but we do all of our Slackware development as root. You have to be root when you're developing the operating system. So I, I'm pretty careful that I've been doing it for oh, about 25 years at this point. Okay, so we're gonna enter the um, kernel directory and all we need to do here is well, I'm not going to refer to the instructions, so I know. So we're going to do the kernel modules first, and then we're going to do the kernel arm like that. Okay. Oh, by the way, if you are interested in making your own script for this, you'll find in the uh, in this file here called version. It's just a text file, and all it contains is this here, which is the kernel version. I think it has arm v8 as well, actually. Let's check. Oh no, it doesn't. It just it, oh. I think it's supposed to, hmm, okay. Um, it will have the, it basically when you, um, the kernel version file should contain this, exactly the same output as this for the running kernel. Oh, it obviously doesn't at the moment, so I'll fix that later. Um, but if you want to write a script, that will enable you to easily, um, you know, compare the output of uname r with, the content of that file. So you can just download that file over the internet. Does your uname dash r meet, match the contents of that file? If it doesn't, download the updates and apply them. So uh, as I said, I might write a script to do that for myself, but um, you could also write your own as well. So if you did have any error messages surfaced when you transitioned to the Raspberry Pi kernel fork packages initially, uh, you shouldn't when you upgrade. So if you've already, once you've got the Raspberry Pi kernel fork packages installed, there should be no error messages surfaced here it should just it should just be clean if it's not then that is indicative of a problem but there really shouldn't be any problems at this point it's only when you uh, initially transition and also when you revert back if you want to do that back to the uh, to the official kernel package okay so that's just finishing off so yeah so if you're going to switch to these packages, I just advise you to read this entire page first um, so that you're aware of uh, what the caveats are and you know how it works. Um, it's, it's just worth noting that I don't update the Raspberry Pi kernel fork packages that often. I, I At the moment, I've done them kind of every other kernel version. It's literally just as time permits because I do test these things before I push them out. It does say that I don't test them. Um, but I have so far. Okay, so it's been updated, upgraded. So we just need to reboot. So there we go. And we, we're back at the serial console. And this is the monitor of the Raspberry Pi. There we go, yeah. So we'll get the output from the serial console up until it um, boots the Linux kernel. I really need some sun blocking uh, blinds, don't I? Although in this country, I tend to prefer any occasion to get the sun is uh, is taken. Okay, but um, so yeah, what, as I said, once you upgrade to the Raspberry Pi kernels, if you did have any initial um, error messages when you first transitioned, that, that those should be gone. But you still will always see the error messages about failed module loading during the boot. They, those won't go away and, and uh, that's fine as well. So there we go, you can see we've now upgraded to the latest kernel available. All right, well I hope that's been useful to you, particularly for those of you who use uh, Slackware on your Raspberry Pi. Of course it's really beneficial to have a, um, a, a kernel with the, with the bug fixes in, but let's all hope that the uh, these fixes do make it upstream at some point. That is the idea of, of how this ecosystem is supposed to work and all of the other hardware vendors, they do that. Um, again, if you like the project, you can like and subscribe. And if you can donate to the project, you can use the links on the screen. Essentially, your donations go towards paying for the electricity, going towards uh, replacing broken hardware, buying new hardware and all that kind of stuff. 
So until the next time, take care and I'll see you later. Bye.